John Murray, Reverend Bill MacMillan. Many of you will know Mac, and he died a few years ago. And Mac always believed that a sermon wasn't a sermon unless it was a reference, a scriptural reading, that a sermon had to be based on a piece of scripture. Um, I dissented from that quite rapidly uh, because the problem with scripture, well, the problem with the Bible uh, is that it can be interpreted in so many ways. So we all use it to, in many ways, to try and prove the point that we're making. And so it can be full of paradox, it can be full of contradictions. But having said that, I'm going to use a bit of scripture today. Uh, I, I, I hope I get it right. Uh, <laughs> I don't guarantee you anything. Uh, I'm going to uh, have a look at a bit of scripture and a couple of ways down at looking at what it's possibly saying to us. I mean, there's an interesting line in Romans 13, 12, and I'll share it with you. The night is nearly over, and the daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Now there's a number of ways of looking at that. I'm going to kind of look at it literally first, and how we seem to associate those things that are evil to the darkness. The darkness covers a multitude of wrongdoing, which is somewhat unfair to the night, particularly in the light of having to go down at nine o'clock at night to swim in uh, Crete because the night was gentler than the day and less threatening. Now I know when we read the lines, let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. We use the night as a metaphor for danger and evil, not as a literal understanding. And the following line is, let us walk with decency as in the daylight. Walk with decency as in the daylight. So daytime is when you're decent, not like the dodgy nighttime. Bright sunlight is associated with goodness and decency. Now, of course, you can allow for certain things that Paul wrote this when they didn't have a lot of artificial light. So the darkness was a little bit more depressing than the light. That's a different view of it. I may be a little bit unfair to Paul. A couple of things I'd like to say in defense of the night. I'd like to tell you about a few people who in the growing darkness of the night aboard the Titanic carried out deeds of great human decency. John Jacob Astor IV. John Astor had enough money to build 39 Titanics. Extremely wealthy man. But on that awful night, his life was dependent on one seat in a lifeboat, despite his wealth. And yet, faced with certain death, he surrendered his place to two frightened children. Knowing that who he was, he was guaranteed a seat. But yet, he gave up and gave a seat to two frightened children. The other person was Isidore Strauss, millionaire and owner of Macy's, Macy's stores in America. When directed to a lifeboat on the Titanic, he said, I will not enter a lifeboat before another man. His wife, Ida, equally refused to get into a lifeboat and gave her place to her, her recently appointed maid, Ellen Berg. I, I wanted to spend 
the last moments of her life with her husband. These people, in a literal way, brought the decency of daylight into the darkest, darkest of nights. The night when the Titanic sank. But we have to look at what Paul meant in chapter 13, Romans. This is the 13th chapter of the Epistle to the Romans in the New Testament. And at that time, Paul was in Corinth. And he was, he was writing letters to everybody. He really did a lot of writing. And it was partially because it was the beginning of a new paradigm, a new concept of religion. So it is suggested that Paul wrote the letter to the Romans, to both Jewish and Gentile Christians in Rome, in order to persuade them to build up a peaceful and close relationship between the house churches. Because most Christians at that time were members of house churches. And they didn't all agree with each other. Jewish people assumed that the new dispensation was for them alone. It was a new way of interpreting Judaism. And yet Paul was bringing in Gentiles, the Romans, the Greeks, and there was an air of suspension. It's got to be remembered that in those early days of Christianity, there was not a singular church of understanding. And some people might disagree with this, but I sense that what Paul was trying to do was codify belief. And in a way, when you look at Christianity today and how there seems to be a singular thread of belief to all the mainstream and even many of the smaller denominations, that that codification worked. Not so much with non subscribing Presbyterians, but most certainly with mainstream churches and a lot of the smaller churches that still share the central tenet of belief. And of course, he didn't win with the Jews because the Jews remained outside of the new paradigm, the new dispensation. And we know, of course, the obvious concept of when he's talking about the light, that Paul is talking about that new light that came to the world, and that new light, the darkness, that new light, the brightness of day, the decency of day, was, in his words, Jesus Christ. So when he wrote, discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light, he was referring to Jesus Christ, that Christ was the new dispensation, that all belief led to us to the person of Jesus Christ. And it was to Christ he was referring. Now it is interesting to note that we non-subscribers were known as New Light Presbyterians. And we don't use that a lot now. Because we saw the light in a different way. That New Light concept was the idea of not just opening your eyes, but opening your mind to think freely. So that was a different concept of a uh, singularly seeing only the person of Jesus Christ as our new dispensation. And in America, New Life Presbyterians is used differently than we would have here. I mean, there was the other story about, in Scotland, outlived and newlived between Scottish Presbyterians, but that's a story for another day.
But whether you look at the story in a literal sense, at Romans, in the sense of darkness and lightness, night and day, we can use sunlight as a metaphor to let sunlight, not that we see a lot of but to let what we do see be the light that of what is best and how we can work together. And that when we see and understand discarding the deeds of darkness and putting on the armour of light, that the armour of light is what New Light Presbyterians understood as the freedom to think, the freedom to act, the freedom to intellectualize, the freedom to be who we are as individuals. That to me is the real sense of putting on the armour of light. Amen.